Hi everyone. Last time we investigated with crayfish. We learned all about the structures of the crayfish and the function of those structures as well. Now today we are going to still continue to investigate the crayfish, but now we are going to investigate the behavior of a crayfish. Now here we have our crayfish again, the same four as last week. However, there is a small difference. One of my crayfish is missing its appendage. Let's pick this up and show you guys. This crayfish only has one pincer. The other one is missing. No worries because it will regenerate. And this is a female as well. We can find the egg pore and we see the long feather-like swimmerettes. Now what we want to see this week is how they interact with one another. What are they doing right now? If you leave them alone in the basin, looks like they're searching, they're feeling out, they're moving, they're walking around. One is trying to climb out. But they are just basically exploring, not doing much. Now let's see what happens when I reach towards it. Whoa, I'm not gonna get too close because it does have those pincers, but what happens when I reach towards it? Did you see the antenna? Let's try that again. What about the other ones? See if I reach toward them, what they will do. This one's not doing anything. Their antenna kind of move around a little bit. This one doesn't like it though. When I reach towards him, what happens? He brings up his pincers, tries to stand up, and tries to pinch me. So when I reach toward it, it tries to defend itself. It's very aware. The antenna is ready to sense, to feel, to see what's going on. And its pincers are ready and it starts to back up. Do you see it backing away? It was all the way here and it moved. Now what about if I touch its back? Let's try to find one and see if I touch its back, what it's going to do. Got all defensive again, right? This is a different one. Let me see if I can bring him to the center a little bit. But if I touch its back, again, it's trying to defend itself moving its arms and legs, trying to feel, moving the antenna all over the place, starts flapping its tail. It doesn't like it. It's not happy. Put him back in there. What if I try to touch his tail? Let's see what happens now. Did you see that? It curled its tail under. Let's try that again. Bring it out and touch its tail. It keeps curling its tail when I touch it. Let's try another one. Let's 
see what happens if I touch its tail. Does he look happy? No, he doesn't. He's unhappy for a couple of reasons. He's out of the water, doesn't feel safe. And when I touch his tail, it curls it back in. Put him back in. Now let's see what happens when I touch its antenna. I have to be really careful here because it can pinch me. Oh, when I touch its antenna, it starts to move backwards. It feels it. Let's try a different one. Let's bring him out. The antenna starts to go all over the place, trying to feel and sense. Let's put him back down. Now I want to see what happens when I put it on the table. I've picked one up. Let's put it on the table and see. Can he walk? Yeah, sure. To make sure he doesn't fall off. Walking all around. Now what if I put some rocks in its way? Let's see if it can go over them or if it chooses to go. Well, it did go around, but they're actually great climbers too. Oh, did you see that? When I try to reach for him from behind, he can feel. Let's put him and see if we can get him to climb over the rocks. Yeah, there you go. Try it one more time this way. Going near the edge, the edge of the basin. Put him back in. Let's get another guy out. Let's see if he wants to climb over. Oh no, he chooses to go around too. He's also walking, checking. Let's touch his antenna, sensing. Here is a male, no egg pour here. Big, strong pincers he's got. Put him back in. Here's a smaller one. Let's put a smaller one here and see if the smaller one, oh, walking backwards, oh no. Let's see what he does now. Walk forwards, turning around. Let's see if he wants to climb over. No, he's walking around as well. Let's catch the guy before he falls off. Let's see if we can get him to walk backwards again. We saw that for the first time. Put him back, get another one out. Uh-oh, don't walk backwards. My fault, I had placed him too close to the edge. I have to be a little bit more careful. And you see I'm alternating crayfish. I don't want to leave one crayfish out for too long. Let's see if he can hold on to my fork this time. Oh, look at that. Oh, he fell off. Oh, look, he was able to climb backwards. And he's moving backwards too. Walking back. Let's grab him before. Why do you think he's walking backwards? Do you think that's a form of protection? Probably, right? To be able to see what's going on.
Now we have the crayfish inside the basin with some rocks and he's all alone now. What I'm going to do is put little homes inside and see if that changes how the crayfish behaves. Bring them to the middle. And now we have some homes. Let's see where, oh, he went inside. He went in right away. What does that tell us? Does he like it where it's dark or where it's bright? Let's keep watching and see what he does. How about if we bring in another crayfish in there? One more in. Oh, this one went right into the house too. Went right for it. He's in there, he's happy, he's content. Let's bring another crayfish in. put number three in there. So one of our crayfish is inside of the house. We had one in there, who's kind of feeling around, moving around backwards. I put a third one in there. Pick this guy up, put him back in the middle, and see where he wants to go. Well, look at that. He went and found a home too. Or is he coming out? Let's put in one last crayfish in there. Here's our fourth. A little crowded now. We have four homes, four crayfish, some elodia, a bunch of rocks. But I only see two crayfish. The other two went inside the home. One is out. Doesn't look like he wants to go in a home. Two are in. And this last one is kind of just searching. Let's put him back in the middle and see if he'll pick a home too. Really fun just to watch and observe and look at their behavior. see if we peek we'll find one who's hiding in there who's happy and there's another one what happens when I take the home away let me take some of these Elodia out so we can see a little bit better well what happened when I took the home out did he go somewhere else he found another home right he likes it in the dark 
let's put it back. Nope. Oh, he snuck right back in. Did you see him walk backwards and sneak back into his home? And these two are really just content walking around and exploring, trying to climb out. Have we seen them interact with one another? Looks like they're being gentle so far. So how many different ways have you guys seen it move? We've seen it walk forward. We've seen it walk backwards. We've seen it shoot itself, swim backwards. Oh, did you see as soon as I brought my hand and he was about to come in, but he went back inside. Oh, and there's two in there. So they don't mind sharing a home with each other. There were two inside the same home. And as for their feeding, I told you last time they are omnivorous. They will eat everything. So they will eat other fish. They will eat each other. Unfortunately, they will eat their babies too, but they also eat plants and vegetables. So if I put carrots in here, and the elodia is a plant that they can eat as well. We just learned a whole lot about crayfish. We learned about their behavior, how they interact with one another, and how they interact with their surroundings. Now you do have a crayfish that was once alive, but it is no longer alive. This crayfish, you may store it and save it in a plastic container. Here is a video of the crayfish. Looks like they're wrestling. Watch till the end and see how he frees himself. Nope, he's about to go for it. Look at that. He snapped its tail and he was able to free himself. <laughs> 